If you're like me, you like to know how other photographers uh, work, how they approach the creative process, how they set up their gear. Uh, well, in this case, I thought, you know, it might be useful for other people to see how I set up my Fujifilm X100V for the street. Not only is it applicable to the V, but it's probably applicable to a lot of the older versions as well. So let's take a look. Hi, Peter Charles of Hooked for Life Photography. And today let's talk about how I set up my Fujifilm X100V for street photography. Now, I've always been in the habit of looking at how other photographers work. Uh, you know, it's interesting to see how people approach things, and it's also uh, an opportunity to learn something. You know, always get something out of it. So uh, I'm, you know, doing the same thing here, giving you an opportunity to see how I work. Perhaps it can benefit you as well. So I have my X100V here, and I'm going to first talk about the physical setup I have for it, and then we'll get on to the rest of the uh, menu setup and how I work with the camera. The first thing I've done, you know, so you've got these Peak Design anchors, uh, I normally uh, either use it with a wrist strap like this, or I also have an X strap as well. So I can flip between the two of them, makes it rather easy. And, uh, you know, it just depends on my mood and how I want to work that particular day. Now you notice I've got the lens hood uh, adapter on here and a filter. If I take this off, you'll see the filter here that's on the front of the lens. It's important. This camera is weather sealed. The V version is weather sealed, except for the front of the lens. So you need to put a filter on it to complete the weather sealing. Unfortunately, when you do that, our lovely, beautiful metal lens cap doesn't stay on. So you have to get yourself a plastic lens cap to uh, protect the uh, filter, keep the dust off of it, and it will fit the uh, hood right over the lens cap, so it's quite easily done. And just to, in case you have not known about this, you have to remove this ring from the front of the lens before you can put the uh, filter lens hood adapter on. So it does degrade the appearance of the camera somewhat, but it, it you know, it's a practical thing. So that's basically my physical setup for the camera. Uh, it's important to have the weather sealing protection and I find the Peak Design Anchors gives me some flexibility. And if I want to put on a tripod, I can take everything off and you know, it gives me room to work. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, connect the camera to my recorder so we can have a look at the menu system and see what changes I make there in order to get the maximum bang out of the, the camera. Okay, I use this camera one of three ways, and sometimes I use all three methods you know, when I'm out shooting. Is I have a, you know, manual focus and use zone focusing. So I'll pick, you know, uh, let's say five meters or three meters. I'll pick that as my center point, set the uh, lens on that, and then away I go and uh, I'll start shooting. Or I use back button focusing and doing basically the same thing. I'll just press the autofocus lock to set my working distance, and then I zone focus just the same as I would be if I was using this manual focusing ring. The, of course, the other thing is I can leave it on fully, full auto and, and shoot that way. So I'm gonna go through the menu choices and you'll see how I've set the camera up to ensure I get the maximum bang for the buck with either manual, back button focusing, or AF. And it's all oriented towards uh, the typical working distances in the street. You know, in that three, four feet, one meter range up to, you know, 15 meters, which is like 45 feet, you know, if you were doing a crowd scene, for example. So I'm sort of working in that range all of the time. So that's how I'm thinking when I'm setting this camera up. So let's take a look at the first thing on the menu. And what I've done is I've gone through uh, the settings to the button dial setting to AF, uh, AE and AF lock mode, and I've set it to on off uh, because it you can also have it on just while pressing the uh, AE lock button right here. So the reason for that is I want to press the button, have it lock that focus, and it doesn't change until I'm ready to change it to some other distance. And that's why you have to turn that to the toggle, the on off toggle. Otherwise, you have to sit there and keep holding the button down in order to keep it locked, and that's a pain in the butt. So uh, for street photography and you want to use back button focusing, first thing is 
turn that to the switch on off and uh, you'll find it works a lot easier. So next, on to the next bit of the menu that's important and that's how we put in our depth of field scale. Okay, here I've got depth of field scale and you see I've put it to film format. You have a choice between film format and pixel basis. Uh, the difference is uh, pixel basis is for critical sharpness. So if you're a commercial photographer or you're making very large prints, that's important. So, uh, you know, in that case, I would be using pixel basis. But for typical street photography where we're not super worried about critical sharpness, the film format basis makes a whole lot more sense. Now, this doesn't actually change the depth of the field of the camera. Okay, it's identical. What's happening here is our perception, how we see it, and it gives us a wider depth of field for a typical picture where we'll see, oh yeah, that's sharp, you know, the foreground sharp, the background sharp, you know, the subject is sharp, and that's the film format. It's basically what we would have seen years ago on an old film camera. That depth of field scale with film format is much broader than pixel basis. And it gives you a much better idea of the depth of field you're actually working with. Okay, you can see that I've turned the distance scale on. You can see it on the bottom of the image here. I'll put it to manual focus. And you can see the depth of field blue bar that tells me what my depth of field is. So if I put it to around 3 meters, I'm getting everything from 2 meters to 10 meters in focus at f8. So... That's where it's handy to have the uh, film format on. It gives you a much broader band than if you had the pixel bases on. The next thing we want to look at is how I've set up my menu. So these are the settings I've put into my menu uh, on the camera so that as soon as I press the menu button, this is what shows up. Okay, the first one is range limiter. And what that does is it sets limits for your autofocus. That's very important for this camera because the X100 series is known for not having the world's most reliable autofocus. It sometimes can be heading off to infinity for its own little reasons. So by having the limiter turned on, you're saying you've got to work between these points and it stops it from flying all over the place uh, when you don't want to. You're, you're improving your hit rate. So you set it within the distance you're likely to uh, work on in street photography. So. Let's see if I just turn this on, and you can see I've got a custom one that I've already set up, and then I have these other two presets uh, that I could use. But I've chosen to create a custom one, and that's the one we're gonna use for now. Okay, that's on. So you can see AF range limiter is on. Pre-AF can be quite useful um, you, when you're moving through a crowd. Your autofocus is constantly adjusting as it picks up subjects. So it's more or less ready to go. You're not pressing the button waiting for the autofocus to kick in. The autofocus is already there. It is a little noisy, so if you're worrying about noise, you might want to leave that off because you do hear the z -z 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 -z. It's, it's not very loud, but you do hear it. Now we set the focus area up, and this depends on your uh, the focus mode that you've picked. And AF mode, you've got these different choices. And you can see, it, again, it depends on what I want to do, uh, what mode I'm picking out. If there's a lot of people on the street or just a few, uh, with just a few, I might go with single point. Um, when I've got people move all, moving all over the place, I might want to look at tracking. So having that in my menu gives me the ability to flip backwards and forwards quickly. Face detection. Eye detection doesn't work so great on this camera. It does drift off at times. But if you're in a situation where things are moving quickly and you, you've got to be able to grab focus, you know, it's worth trying. Uh, it might work better for you in your situation than it has for me and others, but, you know, it's something worth trying. Uh, auto uh, ISO is the way I work. Uh, basically, I choose my aperture, I choose my shutter speed, and I let the ISO go where it wants. So I have uh, the three choices for auto ISO where I put the upper and lower limits. And you can put the upper and lower limits anywhere you like. And the minimum shutter speed it works out as well. The last one uh, is more of a convenience thing. If I'm working in color, I prefer natural live view on. If I'm working black and white, I like it off. 
And the reason for that is natural live view tries to make the electronic viewfinder look as much like an optical viewfinder. So when you're working with the optical viewfinder, then you switch to EVF and you've got the, uh, this on, it's not a big jump between the two. And it does feel a bit like an optical viewfinder. However, I find when I'm in black and white mode, uh, let's say I've used across yellow, for example, for my film simulation, the contrast is too low. So I turn natural live view off to enhance the contrast of the black and white image. So that's why it's in my menu, because I can flip backwards and forwards between these two states, depending whether I'm shooting in color or black and white. So that's the setup I'm using with my Fujifilm X100V. Uh, it's a great little camera. It's significantly improved in the V version. It covered off a lot of the problems of the older ones, and I've covered that in a previous video. And uh, it's just a joy to use. And now with the uh, new features and uh, you know setting it up properly, the range limiter is lovely. I mean, it's really handy feature. Things of that nature really made it a more uh, usable camera for the street. I mean, it always was a good usable camera for the street, but it now it's even better. So take a look at these settings and see if they're going to work for you. And uh, as I say, yeah, and give it a try. Um, I th I'm pleasantly surprised what this camera will do for me now, especially compared to the older versions. So as I say, that's what uh, settings I use on the street, and they do work for me. So you might want to give them a try. Cheers.